it's now almost 5.30. Um, I still have some energy, so some more V-logs from old subjects. What, um, uh, which subject to do? Oh, 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 Casta. Um, I'm sending this out to you because it harks back to when you asked me to respond to your uh, Dear God question number 10. Uh, and I was going to uh, talk about scientific experiments showing how altruism could arise in, uh, via natural selection. Um, <clears throat> and I couldn't find the book that I was looking for. And you pointed me to a documentary by Richard Dawkins called uh, Nice Guys Finish First. And when I looked at that, it turned out it was talking about the same experiment that I was talking about. And then I found the book that I was looking for, Mind Children, um, by Hans Moravik, published in 1988. Um, so I'm going to put a link up here to uh, the video that you pointed me to, if anyone's interested in watching that. It's like 45 minutes long. Um, but I just want to read a little bit of what he said and then talk about this experiment in my own words. Uh, let's see here. In the book, The Evolution of Cooperation, the political scientist Robert Axelrod notes that cooperation in the biological world can be observed in situations ranging from relations between large creatures and their microbial inhabitants to relations of human beings with one another. In a world where selfishness usually pays off, he asks, how could altruism between unrelated individuals unrelated individuals ever arise. To find an answer, Axelrod challenged game theorists, biologists, sociologists, political scientists, and hackers to submit computer programs which would compete in tournaments that modeled in a highly abstract form the typical costs and benefits of cooperation and its opposite defection. So basically the idea is you have a population of little programs that have certain programmed behaviors um, that are different from one another and they make up a population of individuals uh, who meet randomly and every time two of these program persons meet each one has the choice of cooperating with the other one. It's kind of like rock, paper, scissors without one of the three. It's two, two options. They meet, they can, one can cooperate with the other or one can cheat the other. Okay? So if two of these programs meet and they both cooperate, they get a middle-sized reward. They both get a middle-sized reward. If... <clears throat> Sorry, I can't do this without diet, Dr. Pepper. If they meet and both of them uh, cheat the other, they cheat each other, then they get, they both each get a reward, but it's smaller than the reward uh, that they would get if they had both cooperated. Okay? And if two meet and one cooperates and the other one cheats, then the one who cheats gets an enormous reward, much bigger than the one they that it would have gotten if the two had both cooperated. And the one that cooperated and got cheated gets zilch. So if you do the math from an individual point of view, um, the smartest choice is to cheat. Because if you cheat, you never get nothing. You might get a huge reward. And you definitely are going to get a small reward. That's the, that's the theory. So as an individual, your best choice is to cheat. So then the question becomes, you know, how can individuals interact with one another in different ways? Uh, and what's the most successful method? And to cut to the chase, there were the, 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 the various programs that were submitted, oh, 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 the catch is all these separate programs are in a population where they are going to keep meeting again and again, okay, over time, randomly, but over time they will meet again. <clears throat> and basically the most simple program would be a program that cheats all the time or a program that cooperates all the time. And then 
the next most simple would be one that just cheats and cooperates randomly. Um, that might be a control. Um, and various other strategies were developed, and he actually doesn't describe them all, and I'm not sure the documentary does either. But, but to cut to the chase, the, the, to everyone's surprise, the most successful um, strategy was to always cooperate upon first meeting and then to play tit for tat. Whatever the other uh, program did, you would do that to them the next time you saw them. And uh, I'm not going to do all the math here, but, ba but, but basically what, what ended up happening was because individuals always, because individuals who cheated always were cheated the next time uh, they met that individual and because individuals who cooperated were all always cooperated the next time they met um, in the end the ones who observed the golden rule and started optimistically won out and were the most successful consistently no matter how uh, any other program operated that was the successful program um, and you can go look at the books in the documentary and try to work it out and I'm actually I'd be very interested to hear responses from math-minded game theorists uh, about this because I'm not one of them I don't I'm not a scientist and don't pretend to be uh, but I'm very interested in in some of the uh, implications of this Sorry, I had to go away for a minute. The interesting thing about this experiment is that it suggests that um, the golden rule is Darwinian. You know, this whole this whole idea that somehow evolution and uh, natural selection uh, favor favors uh, the vicious and the greedy is a misunderstanding. You know, survival of the fittest means survival of the fittest, not survival of the toughest, not survival of the most evil, uh, not su survival of the most selfish. Um, but what, what's interesting to me about the theory, the reason I wanted to talk about it, because other people have talked about it, I'm not introducing this to the atheist community and, you know, I don't know. Uh, but uh, the thing that's interesting to me about this experiment is the, it showed how the fact of individuals being in a community where they knew each other could cause them to be altruistic about the other creatures that they knew. It also suggested that that if if creatures who were not part of the community came came through at random moments and you and you didn't know uh, whether you would ever see them again, evolutionarily speaking, uh, it would behoove you to have an instinct for cheating them, because that would because in a in a case where there would be no follow up meeting, then the original rule about what's best for the individual would apply that you're you're be better off ch cheating them because you'll at least you'll get a little something and you might get a whole lot, but you'll never get nothing you know and what this suggests is that community uh, fosters altruism and but also possibly fosters an instinctive um, desire to hurt or cheat the stranger and it also well, I mean, there, there are all the. Uh, I'd be very interested to, to hear what some other people might think about uh, um, other uh, implications that this might have um, in a situation where the differences between the individual strategies were uh, created by genetic mutation, because it it would because obviously we look at a culture there are all sorts of people in the culture and the difference between people to the extent that it's innate 
um, would have to be a result of mutation or randomized uh, um, the, the complexities and the, the, the random element of, of uh, mating and procreation and all this kind of thing. And it just it struck me that in a, in a, in a group where everyone knew each other, but individuals would be born on a fairly regular basis who were not the most successful type but were still within the community, that in certain circumstances, like for instance if they were born with an instinct to always cooperate, which would be disastrous for them in a environment in which um, they, uh, they had to deal only as individuals, but they were in a community, that it might behoove the community as a whole and individuals within the community um, who had a different strategy to perceive that they were always cooperating and become their become their leader or on the other hand to cheat within the community when you could see that the individual you were dealing with always cooperated Inter I'm, it's, it's getting very vague and I don't actually have the intellectual rigor to work out all the details. The thing that the, the thing that really interested me about this whole experiment and what it suggested is what it says about the internet which I mean we've all seen you know before there was an internet uh, we look at culture and we see that when people think they're anonymous they act differently than uh, when they know they'll be recognized from crime to vandalism to pranks and this has been uh, exacerbated insanely by the arrival of the internet where everyone is sort of anonymous and a whole culture has grown up which I'm fairly unfamiliar with I didn't get onto the internet until early 2003 and for a long time I just had a dial-up connection and, and I you know uh, before YouTube, my only r interaction with fellow interneters was really on IMDb. So uh, the, I'm learning all about this on the spot. Um, but uh, it, an internet culture developed based on anonymity. And I'd be very interested to hear people's comments about, you know, this, this uh, experiment and what it says about human nature and what it might say about how human nature is developed on the internet. But then, to take it meta, one meta further, if I may uh, be so bold, uh, YouTube is a new development. It's not a completely new development uh, because there, were, there was always, uh, there, there, were, there has been video chat for quite a while. Uh, but the thing about YouTube is, and correct me if I'm wrong, people who know a lot more about the internet than I do, uh, it seems to have introduced the idea of being stuck with your personality in public on the internet. If you, if you are one of the people who puts their face on their videos and talks and says things about themselves, yourself, even if you even if you keep some secrets, you've, you've solidified yourself in a way and you not only are communicating with other people, but you are doing it publicly, you know? And, and one of the first things that just struck me, you know, when I got on the internet was just this, this flame war mentality, this, this uh, uncontrolled aggression thing. And then the other thing that struck me when I started dealing with a group on YouTube, which was the atheist community, but it's probably true of a lot of other groups, you know, was, was how hilariously childish this ended up being when you actually had people's faces uh, attached to the stuff. Not that it wasn't childish uh, on, on anonymous message boards, but, um, you know, it was like a, a, a descent into 
early childhood where kids are trying to sort out how to behave in the world and they never except that these are adolescents or adults and they never do <laughs> except that this is also incredibly new and things are happening and if you read between the lines perhaps you might see why this was on my mind at this particular moment but anyway uh, just um, you know I'm interested in other people's thoughts but probably won't contribute much back and forth on it myself at least not in the short term so there's another video